this. Forgive me. Uh, one more time, Coach Borino welcoming everybody. I forgot to hit the record button for our friends on YouTube who are going to watch it on a replay. So welcome, Coach Borino, with you. Let me show you my fancy name right here, and we can get started, all right? Another edition live is on the way. So we're talking about Sharon's question. When calling and working expires, do you call or just the ones in your area? How far do you go, especially if you're in a large area? So, so let, let me answer, answer that question. question. When you first start working expired listings, do not be selective at all. Call everybody. And there are a couple of reasons for that. Number one, it gives you a great opportunity to practice your communication. That is one of the most important, most vital skills. We talk about it every week here on live. Every week I stress out how important it is for you to create good first impression, to connect with the seller, ask the right questions, and then either set up the appointment, put them on follow-up, or go visit them in person. Very, very important. So when you're starting out, when you're mastering this stuff, when you're uh, still working on your ability to be connected, high status agent who controls the conversation and gets the desired outcome, which you can, it is a great idea to call everybody. The second benefit to that is you don't get, to, you don't get attached to the outcome because in your mind you already know you're just practicing. So whether they tell you go fuck off, go fantastic, thanks for calling, come on down, or we don't want to sell, or dozen of other possible responses, you don't really care. It doesn't really matter because you're just practicing. So spend the first few weeks, maybe a month or two, to really just get it down. Get the questions down. Get the opening. The opening line is so important to get down so it doesn't come across as a script. It comes across as a dialogue, as a conversation. Like you and I. If you and I would get on the phone or you get on the phone with your best friend or your spouse, it has a different tone, different energy, different quality. That's what you want to achieve there. So that the person on the receiving end is going, well, wait a second here, do I know this person? That sounds really familiar. You're creating comfort and familiarity from the beginning. And it's artificially created, not a shenanigans, I'm not talking misleading somebody or being deceiving. But subconsciously you want to put them at that state where they feel comfortable, they trust you, they're inclined to answer your questions. Okay? So start big. Call everybody. Get in the habit of calling. And then start tracking the results. As you get good at it, and again, it should not take you more than a few weeks, but as you get good at this, you get to start narrowing it down. Now, how narrow or how wide should you go? The answer really lies in two questions. How bad do you want it? How many do you want? And actually three. How many does it take to get you there? So what you want to look at is, let's say your goal is to list, now I'm going to make it up, <laughs> anal extraction, put it out of my ass. Let's say you want to list 20 expireds in the next 12 months. What you want to work backwards is if I need 20 expireds, I need, let's say, again, I'm just making the numbers up, you will be different, but let's say I need 40 listing appointments. In order for me to get 40 listing appointments, I need 300 expireds. And you work it backwards. So how many do you need to connect with daily, and it's going to be what, about one a day, two a day maybe, to get to your goal? So rather than focusing on a geographical area, don't limit yourself. Because it may be wider, it may be smaller, I don't know, but it needs to start with how many do you want? How many do you need? How many do you fit in your business plan? We did an exercise not long ago. You probably were on that webinar. I know Sharon, you probably were. You're one of my diligent students. Where we break it down, your total goal of transactions, an equal number of, of course, income that you get from that, and then how, what, what, are, what are the percentages? What is the piece of the pie that will come from expires? And then you work it backwards. Don't limit yourself, go big. Work it hard. Reason why you should work this hard is because expireds are one of the best sources of listings. They're easy compared to all the other methods where you have to prospect hard, find them in the first place, make sure you're talking to the right people, follow up with them, hopefully get an appointment, hopefully you convert them into a good listing. Expireds are a whole lot easier compared to many others. There are really only three groups that should be your core groups if you have them, work them. Expireds, new and old, for sell by owners, and referrals. And then you can add others, but that should be in your core. Because now they're easy to find, they're easy to convert, they're already in the process, so you don't follow up for two years with these people. Boom, you can get a listing right away, very quickly. I mean, look at my man Gene Steely, one of our members of Rockstars, Jim is crushing it. Daniel Lissa, Florida, with Remax. Got back on the phone, took a little break. Good life, kumbaya. And now he's back. Landed four appointments this week, just calling new and old expireds. You can do the same thing, no reason why you couldn't. It takes some skill, it takes some practice. Use the expires as your practice. Here's the cool thing. Let's say 
you start calling and you completely fuck it up. And I mean, you ob obliterate the conversations. You're not getting anywhere, which will happen at the beginning. You should have heard my first conversations. That would be comedy like you won't believe. <laughs> Thank God it does not exist. And if it does, nobody's going to see that shit. <laughs> but let's just say you completely destroy it and you're not getting anywhere. Here's the best part. Tomorrow, there'll be more. So it doesn't matter what happened today. It doesn't matter how bad it was today. It doesn't matter what kind of response did you get or not got today. You can always start fresh tomorrow. You can look back and say, okay, what can I do better? Let's listen to the recording. Let me see where I can improve my communication. Because you know these people, look at the statistics. Just check your MLS. You know they're going to list sooner or later. Not all of them, obviously, but a big chunk will. Why not with you? So you look back and you say, okay, tomorrow I'm going to do better because there'll be more tomorrow. New expires, old expires. Cancel listings. Great opportunity. So thanks for that, Sharon. Good question. Hope that answered it. You know what to do. Go out there and get him. I like this bit of good news. You know, these days, if you are on Facebook more than five minutes a day, you can't get not tangled in all that political bullshit and noise that's just distracting us from what our mission is here to help people make money, be successful, feel good. So I want to share Christine's post. A little update since the first of the year, I have signed five new listing contracts and have two more listing appointments set for this week. Thanks, Barino. 2017 is going to be the start of my rock star status. So here we are, 20-some days in the 2017, and Christine has already crashed it. And many others, by the way. There has been a slew of great posts lately. I don't know if you noticed. I'm sure you have. So that's awesome. Now, the reason I wanted to show you is, number one, to show you that I'm a genius when it comes to coaching. I should get a medal. Wait, I have this. I can wear this because I'm the money man. Remember this? Can you see it? Wait, right here. Ha! <laughs> it's all about the money, money, money. Of course, it's not just about the money, but it, it matters. You know what I mean? So, the reason I want to show you, there's money to be made. There's opportunities out there. There are listings out there to be had. There are people who need your help. Do it. Do what I tell you. Stop questioning me, God damn it. Just go do it. Follow it. It works. Christine is approved. Everybody is approved that you can have your share this year. All right? So that's why I wanted to show you. It's happening. Okay. Next question is from Mary Elizabeth. You guys like it? Good. Welcome, everybody. Wow, lots of cool people. Good to have you guys. All right, let's talk about Mary Elizabeth's comment. Well, hey, Rockstars, this is another fuck me speech. <laughs> You can be open. This is rock stars. I had finished my open house, grand neighborhood, and I saw for sale by owner. I turned my car around and had a listing packet ready in my hand. I note on the doorbell, please do not ring doorbell, baby sleepy. A large barking dot saw me through the glass door. Woof, woof, loud bark. I see a nice lady, like she was going to come to the door. I waited three seconds and laid the presentation on the doormat, and I was walking fast as hell to get to my car. <laughs> can you guys relate to that? I know I can. She opens the door and said, I'm sorry, but your baby woke up. It says for sale in the driveway. She said, we already have her folder. I said, keep it as a gift. Then she said, I'm not the owner. I'm a renter. Oh, double fuck me. At least I went by. Note to self, you post a note number, I ring the doorbell, baby sleeping. Get the dog away from the door. Now, Mary Elizabeth, a couple of things I want to give you. And all of you guys. First of all, kudos and thumbs up for you to follow through to actually go to the door. It's tough at first. It takes some balls at first. It is not comfortable at first. You've got to break through the comfort zone at first. It is scary, especially if they have do not door knock or do no soliciting or dogs or babies and all that, which by the way, the baby is bullshit in my opinion most of the time. You did the right thing the right way. You cannot be attached to the income outcome, nor do you control the outcome. But what you control is your actions. And right now, doing this in the way you did, being the gutsy one and going for it, you have demonstrated your willingness to break through the comfort zone, your commitment to be the best you can, to get the business that's out there. And trust me, the universe has noticed. You have noticed. Because I assure you, speaking from experience, one of my first, seriously, one of my first expired listings, I pull up, it was a pretty nice house. I pull up, I look at the property, I look at the MLS sheet, I look at the property, I look at the MLS sheet, and I just sit there like a fucking idiot for about 25 minutes. 
I did not have the guts. I didn't have the balls to get out of the car, knock on the door, and talk to the homeowner. And you know what? It haunted me. For, I still tell the story. So somewhere deep inside, I still feel shitty about it. You would have felt so shitty to see it for sale by owner and not have the balls and the guts to go. Thumbs up for you doing the right thing. It was the right thing, and I applaud you for you being willing to do that. It feels so much better. You will feel so proud to get it done because the next one will be a little easier, a little easier, a little easier, a little easier. As opposed to if you chicken out, you reaffirm that you're a chicken, that you don't have what it takes, and all that negative programming that we have in our head. They will then start skewing you that way. See, so you're either getting closer or further away. You're getting results or reasons. And you had plenty of reasons not to knock, not to ring the doorbell. You plowed right through it. I love that and I applaud that you did. So you wake up the fucking baby. The baby's not going to die. Come on. What's the worst that can happen? So they will yell at you. Pfft. I told you the story not long ago. We were in a grocery store where this young girl behind the cash register got yelled at. Crying. People get yelled at all the time. It's just part of life. That sometimes happens. Thick skin is helpful. Not just in this business but in life in general. I'm worried that this next generation that's coming behind us is going to be a generation of wussies, wimps. You've got to have some balls. You've got to have some cojones and go for it. And you did. And that's awesome. That's the most important thing you can develop is this fortitude. It's like, fuck it. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to give it my best. Results be damned. I don't care at this point. I just need to prove to myself that I have what it takes. And it's hard. And you did it. And you have a huge thumbs up from me for that. Now, here's what I would do as a follow-up. I would send a nice little thank you note saying, sorry, I woke up your baby. If there's anything I can do, please don't hesitate to call. I'm here to help. Here is enclosed some helpful information. And you enclose something like a market update or, or a, a list of websites where they should advertise. There's a whole bunch of things you can offer. And I would totally keep following up with them. Here is the general rule I want you to adopt with Fizzballs. Everybody. Because there's another question that comes in about the Fizzball, and I'll show you how that ties in. But the rule I want you to adopt with Fizzbos is this. You follow up until they list, sell, and close, or die. That's it. Unless they list with somebody else, or unless they sell on their own and close, or they die, you just follow up. You call them once in a while, you email them once in a while. You may even stop by once in a while. If they do an open house, you stop by. You offer help, you be cool. Because you never know when they're going to turn, when they're going to convert. What does it cost you to send an email once you want, to make a phone call, to send a text, to send a video? It costs nothing. A lot of it will be done by your assistant anyway. You're just like rock stars. Show up. Hey, look at me, Mr. Poo. Got to get some bling bling, you know what I mean? All right, so that's what you do. You just keep in touch. You don't give up. Because it's a lot cheaper to follow up and follow up and follow up than to lose a listing. That's stupid. Okay, so just keep in touch. Don't get too attached. Oh, blah, 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 blah. she said she had a friend. Fuck, nobody cares. We all have friends. <laughs> if you live in Southern California, there are more people with real estate license than a driver's license. So I made that shit up, but you get my point. All right, look how it nicely ties with Jim's question. I recently started working Fizzballs with Fizzborino Approach. Good on you, thanks for being a client. Good system, get it if you don't have it, if you really want to work with Fizzballs. I think it's really good because it gives you a shortcut to just start connecting them, knowing what to do, all the marketing. Anyway, this afternoon on the second contact, the Fizzball offered me a 1% fee for a buyer. Of course, that's a deal I wouldn't do and I don't have a buyer for him now anyway. Should I just drop and move on or make some different move? Definitely make a different move, Jim. Because what you just received is called IOI, Indicator of Interest. Now you have trust. Now you have connection developed with the for sale buyer. owner. Now you're not just some schmuck, uh, real estate, desperate agent gunning for a listing. Now you're somebody who, in their opinion, is cool, who is helpful, who can be trusted. And that's awesome. That's a perfect status. You got to work it now. Sure, don't take the deal. That's not the point. The point is you keep following up being cool and helpful every single time you contact that FISBO. Never hammering them over the head that they should list. Never pushing for a listing agreement. Never being needy or desperate. Being cool, helpful, and poised. Always asking, hey, have you thought about land B? What are you going to do if the house doesn't sell? That's a, excuse me, that's a great question. But nothing else. 
There is no need for them to, to feel like they're being haunted by you, they're being pushed by you, pressured or manipulated. Make sense? So keep in touch, keep in touch, keep in touch. They need to hear from you every seven to ten days. You mail them something, you email them. The most important part of your follow-up is conversations. You must have a conversation with them. And again, the conversation is about what's going on in the market, how can you help them, give them some advice, some tips to promote the property, help them qualifying buyers, whatever help they need, and they will tell you once you have certain trust and a relationship established with them. But the magic happens through the repeated follow-up. Now, if you look at the statistics, majority will list within 30 to 60 days. That's just how it is. Now, your neighborhood statistic may be slightly different, but I'd be shocked if it was very different. So go stay with them. Because at the end, who's going to get the listing? The agent who is cool, who is helpful, and who keeps in touch, who offers something helpful, who is perceived as helpful, high status agent, not a needy, desperate salesperson. Make sense? Excellent questions. Love it. All right, guys. Let's see what's going on live. Jeffrey says snowflakes. Yeah, I, I, I'm worried about that. You know, I'm, we have two kids and I'm pretty hard on them when it comes to discipline and raising them because I want to make sure they're well adjusted. I don't want them to sit on a psychiatrist's couch 20 years from now complaining about Borino's psychotic dad. That's, that's not my goal. But on the other hand, I want them to be tough. I want them to have a certain fortitude and going for it. And I want you to have the same quality. It will serve you well. It has served me. All right. All right. Yeah, I know what the problem is. Thanks. With the audio, we fixed that. Thanks. Thanks for the heads up, Brian. Appreciate it. Should be better now. Let me try. Hello, hello, hello. Little Borino the Rockstar talking to you on this camera and now talking to you on this camera. I'm running the whole board. How Rockstar is that? <laughs> All right, so that should be better. Okay. So, Glenda has a question. Our MLS system does not show owner's phone numbers or email. What's the cheapest way to find owner's phone number? Or do you suggest knocking on their door instead? Great question, Glenda. What I would recommend is get one of those data providers, data aggregators, scrubbers. There are several I recommend. The one that I think is one of the best is Espresso Agent. Espresso Agent. If you use the code Borino, you can test drive it. There's also, there should be a file. Uh, you can download a certificate here in the files in the resources in the real estate rock stars give it a try they will scrub your mls and get you the expired phone numbers and emails it's not 100 percent accurate none of the systems is but it will help you because most mls systems these days don't offer phone numbers anymore so use one of them there's red x there's land voice there's vulcan vulcan is really good but quite expensive so check them out, see which one works the best for you, where you get the most bang for your buck. Good balance between quality of the data you're getting and, and the money you spend on it. So that's one. Two, always go visit the expired if you can. Because many you don't have the phone number, it's a wrong phone number, a bunch of agents are calling. So you want to open as many channels as possible with these folks. That means if you have their email, email them. If they have the mailing address, mail them. Use the expired plus package. If you have their phone number, call them, text them. Open up all these channels because you never know up front who's going to respond, how. Which channel will resonate? Sometimes it's the text that hooks them where you start the conversation. Sometimes it's the phone call. Sometimes it's the package you mail them. Sometimes it's the follow-up where it's going to take a few touches before you see some results. Does that make sense? So you keep in touch, you keep in touch, you keep in touch, you keep in touch and visit. Because if you have a chance to meet the seller face-to-face, -face, the dynamic is very different. The relationship is very different. Suddenly, you're not just some stranger on the phone, some strange voice trying to get the listing, somebody who's cool, who's pleasant, who is pleasant to talk to. So go visit them. Yeah? Good question. All right. Arun has a very good question. Borino, do you include your follow-up activities in your regular prospecting time or do you schedule separate time for that? Separate time. Those are two separate activities. Man, my hair is all over the place today. You guys see that? I don't know what happened to me. I did shower, I promise. <laughs> so those are two separate activities. Generating new business is a separate activity. That should be part of your day. Majority of your day should be spent on generating new business. Prospecting. So let's say you work eight hours a day. Four hours should be focused on nothing but generating new leads. Then the other four hours you divide between admin time, Studying the market, practicing, learning, getting better, and following up. 
So those are two separate ones. And you can have them back to back. You can block them together if you want. But that should be your focus. Chunk of your time, 50% of your energy, focus, and time should be on generating new leads. The other 50% on everything else, including your follow-up. Now, follow-up is very important. Don't get me wrong. I totally understand the, the, the importance of it. Because leads by themselves are not worth anything. It's the conversion into appointments and listings that will pay your bills, right? So it needs to be an active part of your schedule daily, where you text people, you email them, you mail them. You have a sequence set up. That's why tools like uh, Realty Juggler or LionDisc are so important, OK? But those are two separate activities. Don't mix them together. All right. Juan wants to know, and many of you want to know, the progress on LionDisc. No update yet. We are working on it. And I slightly dropped the ball. It's kind of my fault, too. Because I was so, uh, we were in Vegas. Before that, we were on vacation. We were on break. So we're catching back up. We're building the momentum back up. We are working on it, guys. Stay tuned about Borino materials being part of LionDisc. We are working on it. All right? Good. So the sound is good now. I'll see you. Welcome. We're starting our boot camp tomorrow. For those of you guys coming to the boot camp tomorrow, there's an email that's going to go out this afternoon. After we finish, I'm going to write you a little note just to make sure you got the registration for the webinar. I got your homework. You have the binder. You have all the materials. You have access to the website. We are starting tomorrow. I am excited. I can't wait. This is going to be an epic boot camp with a fantastic group of agents. We're going to have terrific two months together building your business, working on your leads, your listings, and commissions. So I'm looking forward to it. All right. Julia would like to know, Borina, what is the good conversation starter for door knocking, introducing myself to a new area? Really good question. I, this was one of my first things I used to do when I got in real estate. You know, I had zero budget, zero skills, zero anything, so I figured might as well go and door knock. So I did. So here's what I would recommend you do. If you're a member of the Listing University, by the way, there is a session I did where I spent about 90 minutes talking about it, including Q&A and including some marketing materials. But what I would suggest is follow, number one, make sure you have a reason why you're there. Introducing yourself is kind of lame. Nobody really gives a shit. I mean, no offense, but they just don't care. Nobody does. You know, they care about themselves. So I would switch it from, hi, I just wanted to introduce myself and see if you can pay me $10,000 for selling your house. I would do something of value. Again, offer something of value. And this guy, you, this guy used to, should be the principal use all the time. This should be the a modus operandi for everything you do, working fist balls and expires. Always offer value first. And it doesn't need to be, hey, here is that new color TV. <laughs> you know what I mean? It could be just a piece of information. So for door knocking, for example, I would have an updated sheet with all the most recent sales in the area. Nice conversation starter. Hey, this is Borino with ABC Real Estate, with Borino Real Estate. I just want to give you a quick update what's going on in the neighborhood. I want to, no, don't say just. Drop that just. This is Borino with Borino Real Estate. Wanted to give you a quick update, let you know what's going on in the neighborhood. Several properties have been selling. It seems like a lot of folks want to live in this neighborhood. Have you thought about selling? Do you know anybody else who might be interested? If you were to go, where would you go next? Would it be this year, next year? What would be the ideal plan? Where do you see yourself? Start a conversation. Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't we get together for 20, 30 minutes? Let's see what would be the most a qualified buyer would pay for a home like yours right now. Would it help you make the right decision? And you can either send them the CMA or even set up a listing appointment. Okay, so start a conversation like that. Offer something of value. You can invite them to an open house. Hey, it's Borino with Borino Real Estate. I'm having Jack and Susie around the corner on Oak Street. We're going to be holding an open house this weekend. We'd love to invite you. Maybe you know somebody who may be curious, who would like to live in the neighborhood. How about you guys? Have you thought about living somewhere else? Start a conversation. New listing, new sale, anything. I'd like to have something tangible with me. A little black and white flyer, something super simple, targeted at sellers. I'm not interested in buyers unless they need to sell something first. Okay? So that's the general approach. Have a conversation with them. Now, be ready. Most of them are not interested. They don't care. They don't want to do anything. But some will. And those that will, usually will be down the road. That's the downside of door knocking, that you very seldom will get a lead who says, oh, yeah, we're thinking about it next week. We're going to put the house up for sale next week. Glad you stopped by. It doesn't happen very often. Most of them will be when my husband retires, when our kids move out, when they go back to college or go to college, or when I finally divorce that asshole. That <laughs> happened to me. You know what I mean? So it's going to be long term, which is cool. I mean, get their information, put them on a follow up, keep in touch. Super simple. Yeah? Helpful? All right. 
Lucy would like to know if you should email me your homework before tomorrow. Yes, please. Yeah, email it to me as soon as possible, Lucy, for the bootcamp. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the thumbs up. All right, question from George. Borino, do you think it's the best to wait the next day to go door and drop package? Go to the door to drop off the package as opposed to the same morning. I ask that because often the seller has already released it but just hasn't shown in the MLS. So when you do this, you just wasted time and resume. Just trying to use my time more wisely. What do you think? Good question, George. I would suggest to go right away and find a window where you have the best chance to talk to the seller in person. Because you're right, many of them will relist with the same agent, already have relisted, but many haven't. And it's very different dynamic if you're the first or at least one of the first agents they talk to on the phone or in person. Most agents don't go there in person. So you'll be a minority. Some, most of the time you'll be the only one. Notice that there's just not a huge crowd. But I would still be there as soon as possible. And even if they relist it, I'd rather waste a package than lose a listing or at least lose an opportunity to get the listing. That's been my philosophy. And yes, sometimes they relisted. And yes, sometimes it was a waste. But I would still rather do that. Because here's what I figured. There is nothing more productive I can be doing than taking a swing, taking a swing, and taking a swing. And by being out there trying to reach these sellers, dropping off packages and follow up with them, that's one of the most productive things. I mean, what else are you going to do? Write another blog post? I mean, seriously. You know what I mean? So yes, some will release, but not a whole lot. If you check, do a little homework, do a little research, check your MLS stats, and you will see that only a small percentage We'll realist with the same agent right away. Yeah? So go there. Go there. Hit them as early as you can to reach them, whatever that window is, and then late in the afternoon, I would go back. You got to be aggressive. Even the one stop is not, not good enough anymore. People work. People are busy. So find the window. My window, and again, yours will be different, was early in the morning, around 5 or 6 o'clock in the afternoon, Saturday morning, Saturday evening, and then Sunday morning. Those were the best times but you want to get there as early as possible. Excellent question. Thanks for that. Mr. George, all right. We answered the line this question. Welcome, you guys. If you're just joining us, Coach Borino coming to you live. Another Tuesday, Ask Borino. All right. Corey has a question about Fizbos. Shh. Question. When working Frisbos, after I send out the step one emails, the next day or two I will start getting calls and they have no way of knowing who it is because I just their email. It was from Craigslist. So they kind of catch me off guard because I don't know which property they are and of course I reached so many Fizbos at once. Any suggestions on how to handle it better? Corey, there is really no... I mean, yes, you can get technical with it. I think you're overthinking it. And I understand what you're saying that you, you send out these emails, the next day you're receiving phone calls and you don't know who you're talking to. <laughs> One of the best tips I can give you is be honest. You know, I read several homeowners, which property, who is this? That also establishes your status. Oh, what is the homeowner? Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. I don't. No. Sorry, I'm not sure. I sent several emails. I've contacted several homeowners. I'm working with several clients. Which property is yours? No big deal. I'm polite. I'm not arrogant. But I'm not, not also a pushover, you know what I mean? What if they get pissed? Or what if they hang up? You're not any worse off. What did you lose? Nothing. So don't overthink it. Now, if you're in the car, if you're driving, tell them, hey, I'm sorry, I'm driving right now. Can I call you right back? Boom. Then you pull over, you take out your notepad so you can make some notes, have a little conversation, go set up an appointment to see them. Don't overthink it. See, our mind is kind of a fucking, uh, sometimes, monkey. <laughs> This is why it won't work, and this is the problem, and here's what's going wrong, and da, 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 da. shut the fuck up. Just do the thing you need to do. You know what I mean? And it's hard. I'm reading a book where they talk about the monkey brain. It's a Buddhist book. I know, a Buddhist that talks about, that uses a bad language like I do. <laughs> Go figure. But you will so, it's so easy to get stuck on all these reasons why this is too bad, and that's complicated, and that doesn't work, and this should be this way, and you know what I mean? Don't overthink it. Email them. When they call you back, awesome. That's IOI, indicator of interest. That's a good thing. Have a conversation with them. And if you don't know which property, be honest with them. You have nothing to hide. You're not doing anything illegal, unethical, inappropriate. You're trying to help. They should be thrilled that you're trying to help them. They should appreciate the fact that you're trying to help them. 
They should welcome your help, your suggestions, your guidance. Different position, different mentality, different attitude. You're getting me? You got to take on a different personality. And if you have to fake it a little at the beginning, so be it. I was very good at it first. You know? But that's what you got to do, Corey. Again, some balls. But what if they're rude? And what if this? What if that? Don't live on what if. Fuck what if. If it happens, deal with it. Do the best you can under the circumstances. You're not going to get them all. And some will be pissed. And some you will not connect with. But some you will. And some will say, come on down. Come take a look. Help us. Those are the ones you're looking for. So don't overthink all this. Be cool. Just keep doing it. Keep doing it. You may later figure out a better process, but it's not about a process. It's about taking the step over and over and over and over. Make sense? Yes, Corey? Pat says, great door knocking advice. Glad you liked it, Pat. Awesome. Okay, guys. Mr. Troy Copeland, always nice to see you, my friend. How are you doing down there in Texas? All is well. Thanks. Thanks for asking. Cool. Alfredo from Austin, Texas, checking in. And Gail, lovely to have you as always. Send out postcard rock star. Totally love what you're doing. And hello to Mr. Steve as well. Jeffrey checking in. Ready for spring. Yeah, we all are. We had a shitty winter so far. Not much snow and I miss it. Yeah, then we're going to get some next week. I'll be bitching how I can't drive in DC. <laughs> Glenda says, Boreen, I need some inspiration today. Looking forward to the session. Well, I hope you've been getting a lot of inspiration, Glenda. So I appreciate it. All right. Okay, guys. Let's see. What else do we have? Andrea says, this makes complete sense. I'm building my confidence and entering month eight. And it is hard at first. And it is hard, Brenda, and everybody else, to get caught up in this, well, the seller is in control, and I need the listing, and if I fuck this up, it's the end of the world. It's so easy to get trapped into that. I get that. But you got to watch it. Because think about it this way. Bunch of our sell by owners, only one you. Bunch of people who need your help, only one you. Now, yes, you say, well, what about the other agents? What about them? There is something special and unique about you. There's something different that only you bring to the table. Now, here's the funny thing. I believe it more than you believe it. And I say this to my students, and I will say it tomorrow during the boot camp. I believe in you guys more, often, not always, more than you believe in yourself. I see the potential, the opportunity, and the chance to make it big, sometimes clearer, more clearer <laughs> than you do. True or false? I think you totally have what it takes to be a rock star, make a lot of money, be successful, help a lot of people. But the foundation of it all, you got to believe. You got to trust yourself that this is going to work, regardless of the results you're getting right now. And I know that's really hard if the results are not. I know it's challenging where the sellers chew your ass off and there are not enough experts and the ones you contact are absolutely unapproachable and it's just a challenge, uphill battle. But the reason you have to continue is because you're climbing this rock. And you're getting step by step closer to that point where it's going to break where suddenly things will get easier. Suddenly it's going to start clicking. But by then, most of the people who started to climb with you are not going to be around. Look around. You've been in the business for eight months. How many of the people you started with are no longer in the business? Eight months in. Look around. It's not easy. This climb, fuck, it's hard. You're going to get bruised. It's cold. There are not a whole lot of people climbing with you. On the contrary, they're down there drinking coffee going, they're looking at you like this with the coffee going, what the fuck is wrong with her? Why is, where is she going? That's high. That's dangerous. You can fall down, you know? Most people never make it up there. You know people like that. Facebook is full of them. Your office is full of them. You got to keep going. You got to trust the rope is going to hold you when you fall, and occasionally you will. That's just slipping is part of the process of learning. And you just keep going and going and going and going. And yes, you will be tired. And yes, it will be scary. You look down and says, holy shit. Look at that. If I fall, that's going to hurt like a motherfucker. Why am I doing this? I'm not cut out for this. And then you hear a spouse saying, I told you I'm not cut out for this. 
and the bills are not paid on time. And I know it's a lot of stress, it's a lot of work. But I promise you one thing. If you stay with it, if you learn, if you get better and better and better, just 1% a day, remember I talk about it. 1% a day, 1% a day, 1% a day. You stay with it, you keep going, you improve. You like, Okay, when I do this, it works better. When I say this, it works better. And you just keep going. Suddenly you go, oh shit, I got this. I look how hard I am. And the results, oh no kidding, this and this. And, oh, wow. And there comes a point where suddenly it clicks, suddenly the business comes in, the clients come in, you got the hang of it, and you look down and says, you know what, it was worth it. Look what I've accomplished. Most people can't do what I can do. And look at my lifestyle. Will it happen overnight? No. You will not get there overnight. But if you're going in the right direction, using the right tools, the right resources, with the right mindset, and if you stay with it, you absolutely have to get there. Why not? That's how others got there. Does it all make sense, guys? Yeah? All right. Is it Felix or Felix Adolfo? First live view for me. Thanks for the advice. Glad I could help. I hope I butchered your name properly. I am pretty good at it. Andre, I hope that helped. Shireen has a question. I plan on writing handwritten notes to everyone I know to let them know that I am an agent and include some business card. I know I shouldn't use branded paper, but should I just use a plain white paper for the notes or would it be a good idea to use blank greeting cards? All right, let's tackle this one. First of all, you should connect with my girl, Gail. Gail is an expert on how to nurture your sphere of influence and turn people around you into a great pool and resource of business that can flow to you using just simple tools. I was so sold on Send Out Cards, by the way, I became a member. I, I so believe in that tool. And you know me, guys. I don't en endorse many products. But here's what you do. Check out the coaching Gail and I did on how to nurture and build connections with your sphere of influence. She did 50 close transactions last year as a direct result of these activities. Sending a handwritten note, is it a good idea? Yes. But you got to be careful what you put in that note. Let me give an example. Imagine one day you go through your mail and you get a postcard or a note, handwritten note from your friend Steve. And Steve writes to you, uh, Dear Borino, or actually, Steve will write to you, uh, Shireen. Do I pronounce it right, Shireen? Or am I butchering another name? So, dear Shireen, just wanted to let you know that now I have become a dentist. For your next root canal, please feel free to call me. I will have helpful advice on toothbrushes and toothpaste every month in your inbox. Sincerely, Steve. What are the chances of you picking up this? Steve, I am so glad you sent me that note. I am, th this is the perfect timing. I have a root canal, you just became a dentist, when can I come by? Not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. For a couple of reasons. One, there is no trust. You know Steve, but you don't trust him as a realtor. You trust him as a friend. <laughs> That's one, two, and there's no value offer. You know what I mean? So don't do that. That's what so many agents do, and it's a bad way to do it. Most of the time, it doesn't work. There's a better way. You start offering value. But not at the beginning. Let me introduce myself. I am now a real estate agent. Send me business, pay me money. I don't know much, but I will learn on you. Mm, great. Don't do that. You're going to start a conversation in the middle, as if it was going on for a while. We're like, oh, wait a second. Shireen sent me another. Was she? Really? She? Oh, I should know. Uh, you know, confuse them a little. So don't start with introductions. Just start blasting out helpful information. Anything you can get your hands on that you know your sphere will find helpful, cool, or interesting. That's number one. Start in the middle. Number two, be cool, be helpful. Offer something of value first. The handwritten card, that's cool as a thank you card. It gets attention, especially if it's a nice, from the heart written thank you card. But as a first piece, as an intro piece, whether it's written or typed, if there is no value in it, nobody cares. So send a market update. What's going on in the real estate? Some tips on home improvement, some tips on uh, saving money on taxes, on energy. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can offer as a value or as a curiosity or as something interesting. Stuff that you like to read, stuff that you find interesting. Stuff that you know. Why? Because like attracts like. Your sphere is pretty much like you. Now, some of you go, oh, shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? We like certain people like us. We attract our tribe. So offer stuff you find interesting. 
offer stuff that you find helpful, not from a real estate perspective, from a human perspective. And then study send out cards. I love send out cards. I think it's one of the best tools, easiest ways to offer value, be cool, be interesting, and get business as a result. Plenty of evidence around you. Yeah? Gail, would you back me up? Is it, is it true? Amissary wants to know, where can I find the video of you, uh, the interview, oh, we did with Gail? Uh, log into the Listing University. There's a coaching, coaching session we did about three or four weeks ago with Gail. Really good stuff, where she breaks down exactly how she does that, all connection with her sphere of influence. Do, doing a lot of business this year. She sent me a note. I don't have it here, but some crazy, like 27 referrals already received this year. So it totally works. I am totally a believer. It works. We signed up, Hannah is using it in her staging business. I love it. I think you guys should look into it if you want to connect with your sphere. All right? Andrea has a question. Do you give, you're welcome, I'm sorry. Awesome. Do you give expired MLS numbers to interested builders? Or should I not trust the builder and ask my potential client if he'd like to list his 20 acres with me? I would not give out that information. That's a proprietary information, so no. I would not do that. Be the meteor if you can. Be in the middle if you can. If there is an opportunity to help and then make money, I would do that, but no more. All right. Shireen says, thanks, and you did pronounce my name right. Yeah! Yeah, baby! That makes me happy, because normally, man, I can fuck up a name like Steve. I swear I can. I am very good at it. I don't know. It's just a talent I have. Go figure. Okay. <laughs> very good, friends. Let's see what else we got here. Okay, 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 okay. How are you guys doing out there? Is it inspirational? Is it helpful? Are you learning something? Be cool, be helpful. That's really the theme today. All right. Jeffrey has a suggestion going back. We talked about the Fizzbos calling you. Jeffrey suggests, <laughs> thank you. All that love is flying now. Just have them verify their address so you can find their file to expedite the process. Yeah, when you get on the phone, it says, let me pull up your information. What's the address again? That's all you need. Or what's your name again? That's all you need. Don't overthink this. You know, don't, don't make it too complicated. All this is not that complicated. It is not easy. Work in FISBOS, work in prospecting. All, I know, it's hard. But it's not that complicated. It really comes down to communication, connection, trust. Communication, connection, trust. Focus on that. So, good suggestion. Okay. All right, my friends. Let's see if we have anything else that I can answer for you. My man Borino says, Daniel, great topics being covered today, don't you think? Yeah, I think it's good stuff. You see, what I want to encourage you to do is the changes you have to make to make this year your year have to happen on three levels, three things you got to focus on. First is the mindset. We're not going to spend much time today on mindset. Maybe we'll do another session where we'll, that's all we're going to talk about. How to reset that monkey brain and how to reset your beliefs, your focus and your expectations. That may be a topic that we're going to address another day. And there are tools and resources and seminars and people and books and all kinds of good stuff around you to help, including rock stars. So, th but that's, that's, that's the foundation. Let's assume that that's out of the way you believe, you're focused, you have the right, set, right mindset, and you're ready to rock and roll. The next thing you got to evaluate, what tools, systems, and resources do you need to achieve your goal? See, it's awesome that you have a goal to do 100 deals. And it's also awesome that you're positive and optimistic, and you visualize, and you feel it, you see it, you believe it, and you're willing to put the work in. But in order for you to get there, you're going to need some tools and some resources and some systems. Follow-up, lead generation, transaction. I just recorded an interview with an agent who's doing 150 transactions. He's on track to do 150 transactions this year with one full-time assistant. No team. No team. You heard me. You heard me. 30 active listings on the market right now. He's going to close 150 deals this year. He's already like 13 or 15 under contract this year. He's crushing it. One full-time assistant. Why? Because he has tools. His resources. Yes, the right mindset, obviously, but tools and resources. So that's two. Mindset, tools and resources, you're going to need those. Good follow-up system, you need something to organize your leads, to keep in touch with them. 
because lead generation alone is useless. You've got to keep in touch, build trust, build connection, build urgency if you can. And just follow up, follow up, follow up. So they see your name, ah, familiarity. Remember, familiarity creates comfort. You're familiar with it. It doesn't feel strange, foreign, or new. It's familiar. That's the foundation of trust because it creates comfort. I'm comfortable with this. I, I know this name. I know this person. I recognize the picture. We've connected on Facebook. I know a little bit about her family. I know a little bit about his business. You know what I mean? So the repetition is important in your follow-up. And the third one is skill. Skill. You've got to have the skills. And there are only three core skills you've got to have. Communication skill, discipline skill, and presentation skill. Communication is how you prospect, how you uh, engage people, whether it's an open house or a follow-up conversation or visiting expires in person. How you communicate with them is the kind of impression you create, is the kind of person you're perceived to be. Very important. And it's a skill. You develop it. You practice. You work on it. And then the discipline, because on some days it sucks. It's hard. To do it day in and out is hard. You gotta stay with it. It's, you gotta have this ability to shut down or at least mute. I'm tired. It's not working. They are rude. I don't feel good. This is not what I signed up for. I wanna go home. I wanna watch TV. I wanna drink. I wanna have sex. I want food. Uh, and a bunch of other things. These are just the ones in my head. <laughs> you know what I mean? So you have to have the ability to put it on hold and say, job has to be done. This is the task. And I'm going to stay with it until it's done, regardless of how I feel, because the only two choices you have, you change how you feel or do it in spite of how you feel. It's easier if you can change it because it's not as taxing. Because discipline will only push you so far. Then either the inspiration takes off or you're going to veer off. And the third one is your ability to present. To present yourself, to present your listings, to, pre uh, to present your listing presentation. Super important, because even the appointments are not valuable. Leads are not valuable. Appointments are not valuable. Is doing a good job presenting to get the listing, which is your ability to seal the trust, where at the end of the presentation, they sign with you. You got these things in place. You're unstoppable. You got the systems. You got the mindset. You got the discipline. You got the ability to deliver a killer listing presentation. You're a rock star agent. There's nothing else. Yes, you need to know the market, obviously, you need to know how to get the listing sold, there are skills. But they mean nothing if you don't have leads, appointments, and listings. Make sense? All right, friends. Shireen wants to know, what is the latest you call expired on weekdays? Is 7 p.m. too late? Shireen, that's a dangerous question, and I get these questions. What is the best time to call? How soon can I call? How early should I call? What about the do not call list? If you're asking me from a marketing standpoint, I can answer it, but I cannot answer it from a legal standpoint. And I'm sure you understand the difference. I cannot give you legal advice about do not call list or what time to call. But as far as what is the most effective time to call from a marketing standpoint, I can answer that. I would, be, I would call as early as humanly possible, and I would call late. Now, this varies by area. If you're working, if you're uh, targeting a working class neighborhood, the hours will change when you reach people. Because if they're middle of something and they're working, they're not going to be checking their phone most likely, especially if it's a number they don't recognize. Most of the time you're calling cell phones. So you got to test. Now, if you don't get hold of them, you call back. You call back. Don't overthink this. Again, it's just another one of those things we tend to overthink if we don't want to do it. We're looking really for reasons why it will not work and you should not be doing it. You know what I mean? So find the time where you reach the people home. What's the best time to reach people home? Yeah? But 7 p.m. I think would still be a reasonable time to call. Not answering the legal part of it, you understand, right? I'm not a lawyer or a real estate legal expert. I can only give you marketing advice and push you as far as inspiration. But I hope that helped. All right. Elizabeth says, I'm a new agent. I find your videos so helpful and encouraging. Well, thank you for that. I appreciate that, Elizabeth. Thanks for being a fan. I love doing the videos for you. I very much enjoy them. More from a marketing. I have a full-time job for another two weeks, so I usually get home about 6.30. That's fine. You can call at 6.30. I would still try to call in the morning if at all possible. And then for those that I haven't reached, I would put on a later follow-up. Call that evening. Call the next day. And just put them on a dial. Try on a weekend. In addition to mailing them something and following up with them using other channels. I would keep trying. Don't give up so easily. 
I had people pick up the phone two weeks later, out of nowhere. And even I was like, whoa, <laughs> you know, I was startled. But don't give up that easily. You will notice something interesting about your so-called competition. There are other agents in your area working in FISBOS, working expired listings. There are some agents who will call, some agents who will mail, some agents may even visit, not a whole lot. But you will notice that a pattern will emerge once you do this consistently for a short period of time. Most of your competition is eager, but poorly trained, unprepared, incompetent, timid, and totally botching it. They're just not very competent. Most of the other agents doing what you're doing, my students, you guys, is nowhere near the level and the caliber you are when it comes to these things. There are very few who do this well. It's not a coincidence that 5 to 8% of the real estate agents make most of the money. Look around your office, look around your area. I guarantee you there is a very small group of agents, very small group of rock stars, handful of agents doing most of the deals. And there is a whole bunch of agents doing a little deal here and there. True or false? So as you get better and better and better, you're going to leave most of them in the dust. They will not be able to keep up with you. Especially if you incorporate these tools we talked about, where you have the right systems in place, the right marketing in place, the right language, the right communication, the right ability to present. You back that up with a mindset, you're unstoppable. And you're going to be part of that small elite, if that's what you want. That's the road there. It takes work, it takes time, it takes effort, it takes bruises. But it's part of the sport. You know, they say real estate is a contact sport. Hell yes, and you're going to get contacted here and there. And it's going to hurt here and there. And you have to dust yourself off, shake it off, and go, all right, that was not much fun. And you go again. Because it's not about getting knocked down. Everybody does, even the big superstars. And it still hurts. You lose the deal. Somebody else picks up the listing. The sellers cancel on you. Or you botch a listing presentation. All these things hurt. So it's not a question of will it happen to me? It's, am I screwing up? No, that's going to happen. It's part of life. But it's your reaction to it that will determine your status. It's your ability to go, oh, shit. Let me dust myself off. Let's go again. That's what's going to make a biggest difference. And what you're looking back, go, OK, next time I need to say this and not that. Next time I need to ask this, not that. Next time I can do better. That's what's going to get you up there, that climb we talked about. Yeah? All right, my friends. A couple more questions we can take. We have a little time. Mark, I would like to know, in my market, we have four to six expires daily. Is this number too low? Good question, Mark. Compared to what? Is it too low compared to having 40 expires? Yeah, it is low. Is it low compared to zero expires? No, it's pretty good. <laughs> you know, focus on stuff you control. Focus on stuff you have impact on. Can you control how many expires will there be every day? No. Does it really matter? No. You're going to do the best you can with what you have. This is what you have, four to six expired a day. Now, is the number good enough to get some leads? Absolutely. Is the number good enough to get some listings? Absolutely. Is it going to require more work and more expired? Yes. But can it still be done? Absolutely. And the cool thing is the system and approach you're about to learn starting tomorrow in the boot camp, or if you have the expired plus, you can learn it there, is you can work new expires, you can work all expires, you can work canceled. It's the same approach. It's the same thing. Sometimes, like my man Jim just proven, the old expires are even better because you don't have much competition. They're not as pissed off. They're not being bombarded. But many times they're still thinking about selling. Many times that bug is still in their head thinking, oh, we would be better off with a nice house in Colorado. We should get that condo oceanfront. We should move. And when the right agent with the right approach comes along, you can have a good lead, you can have a good listing, and you can have a good client you can help with. So don't get too stuck. Is it too little, too much? Is it too high, too low? It is what it is. You know what I mean? It just is what it is. It's four to six. So you work the four to six that you got. 
Because I guarantee you, out of those four to six every day, many of them will look for another agent. Many of them will try to list with somebody else. Many of them will need your help. You need to find them, you need to connect with them, you need to work with them. That's the goal. And if you have 40, that's great. Some days you will have zero. It just depends. Do the best you can with what you have right now. If four to six is what you have right now, that's what you're going to work with. And make it work. And you can. Yeah? All right. Mary says, great info. Thanks, Mary. Appreciate it. Glad you enjoyed it. All right, my friends. Looks like our hour is up. Thank you for being here today. I really enjoy talking with you. I really like being able to have these conversations with you. Let me ask you a question, guys. Would it be interesting, cool, or helpful if we brought back, we have a system where you can call. We can actually talk on the phone, and I can patch that call to our broadcast, and we can have either a role play, or you can have a conversation, you and I, or um, you can ask questions that way instead of just typing on Facebook. Is it something we should set up again? Because we, we are set up to do that. We have part of our studio here in Burnham Productions, we can do that. If you feel that that would be cool, that would add something to our weekly talks. Because we're going to do this next week again, every Tuesday at noon, Eastern Time, here in the Rockstars, and then replays posted to YouTube. So let me know. Pull some comments. See if that, that would be something we should explore and set up if you see value in it. You know, you just dial a number and I'll patch you in and everybody can hear what you're saying and we can have a little talk. Yeah? So let me know what you think. It would still be broadcasted here in Rockstars. It would still be on Facebook. You can still type your questions. The only ad addition would be I can show you a phone number and if you're near the phone, you can actually call me. So we can have a live conversation. That would be the only, only difference. So let me know if that's something it would be um, um, helpful. Pat says, there was a great information. Ready to start bootcamp tomorrow. Me too. Ready to teach you guys. I'm really excited. Uh, you are my rude awakening. Thank you, says Amazon. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. I need to shake you up a little, guys. Uh, Jackie says, the phone system would be great. Brian prefers the Facebook way. And that's great. We can keep it. You know what I'm saying? It would be both. You can still post uh, comments the way you do and questions the way you do now. And I can scan them. And uh, you would also have the option to call. All right, guys. So Brian says, yes, adding the phone to Facebook Live would be great. Role play would be huge. Now, speaking of role play, a couple of things. I will set up, and we might do it this Saturday. I need to check my calendar, but I'm thinking about doing another live role play. A quick session where we spend about an hour just role playing. If you're up for it, we can set it up. I'll send an email out tomorrow with registration, with a phone number. And let's get together this Saturday for like an hour and role play. Would you like that? Should we do it? Yeah? OK. Oh, OK. Lots of likes. So let's set that up. So we'll do it like noon Eastern time on Saturday. We'll just get on the phone and do a free little back and forth. You know, talk to FISBO, answer expired questions, setting up appointments, just to, you know, the usual stuff. Get a little going. You know what I mean? OK, good. Yes, please, says Victoria. Excellent. OK, role play would be huge. Yeah. All right, so let's set that up. We'll set it up, look for an email, and I'll post it here on Rockstars as well. Just register so this way you can get the phone number, and we'll talk, we'll record the whole thing, so if you want to listen to it. So we'll do that. Cool. That'll be fun. Looking forward to it. All right, my friends. I think our mission has been accomplished today. You're going to have a good rest of the Tuesday, I'm sure. Thanks for being here today, as always. Pleasure chatting with you all. Appreciate you being here. Looking forward to an awesome boot camp starting tomorrow with you, Rockstars. And I will talk to you all. Join us for the live role play this Saturday. We're going to set that up and we're going to have a great time doing it. More good stuff coming. My man Jason is going to talk to us how he crushes it with reviews on Zillow and Yelp. That's coming to the Listing University. Ricky will share with you how one agent plus one full-time assistant can do 150 deals a year with very little, if any, advertising budget and marketing budget. That man is crushing it. Watch how he does that. He wants to keep all the money, and I like that. So that's going to be on Listing University. If you're not a member and would like to become a member, just go to listinguniversity.com and sign up. If you have my systems, it's only $47 a month. Great resource, great place to get inspired, learn, and pick up some ideas. Thanks again for being here. Wishing you all an awesome Tuesday afternoon. Coach Barino signing off. I'll talk to you all next week. See you later. Let's go get him. Bye, everybody.